very own subtle advocate and champion in Unimas, Professor Dr. Chen Chuan Jen. So I will read a brief bio data for Professor Dr. Chen Chuan Jen. She is the senior director of the Center for Applied Learning in Multimedia Calm, University of Mission Sarawak, UNIMAS. As the senior director, she is given the responsibility to spearhead the integration of technology into our university teaching and learning, as well as implementing various strategies, including SOTL, to advance the university teaching and learning. UNIMAS is in the midst of enculturing SOTL among academics as a crucial move to enhance student learning. She is seeing the collaborative effort in subtle practices and collective effort in disseminating subtle outcomes among academics in this region, which will bring more significant knowledge advancement in university teaching and learning as it takes into account the distinctive characteristic of our learners and learning affordances. In today's session, her talk will be on infusing subtle into curriculum development. Let us welcome Professor Dr. Chen Chuan Jen. Over to you, Prof. Thank you so much to uh, Dr. Kati for the exaggerated uh, introduction <laughs> and a very good afternoon, everyone. So for the next uh, half an hour, uh, I would like to talk about, firstly, how SOTA can be integrated into curriculum development process. And secondly, I will elaborate on an example in the context of my university, UNIMAS, um, on the adoption of SOTA in our academic programs. Generally, the goal of integrating SOTA in curriculum development is to ensure the quality of an existing curriculum and also to continuously enhance the curriculum to ensure its relevancy in nurturing future graduates. So, what are the rationales for infusing SOTO into curriculum development? Universities around the world recognize the importance of offering high quality and engaging academic programs. Although there is quite an advancement in SOTA for the past two decades, less inquiry actually has focused on institutional and program level educational reforms, and this was cited in these two uh, literature. So SOTA inquiry into curriculum practice can help to expand the existing uh, literature in the SOTA field and enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of curricula within and across diverse disciplinary contexts. Well, this picture shows the bird's eye view of our beautiful campus here in Unimas. So in the context of Unimas, the rationales of uh, introducing the adoption of SOTA in our academic programs include to correct and sustain high quality and evidence-based curriculum practices via systematic inquiry. Evidence-based practices can prevent ad hoc and biased decision-making in deciding on the curriculum design. And another rationale is, of course, the advanced knowledge in curriculum leadership. So in this slide, you can see the five phases of curriculum development process, which include assess needs, design, deliver, monitor, and reflect. So this process is ongoing and cyclical uh, to afford continuous improvement to the curriculum as to maintain its relevancy. So how to ensure the relevancy of a curriculum? There is a need to synchronize the existing curriculum with the needs, interests, aspirations, and expectations of stakeholders, such as learners and society, industries, and also ensuring that it is in alignment with the technological development. So consultation with stakeholders in the decision-making process is indeed very crucial. So according to Seoul in 2017, determining the scope of curriculum is challenging because knowledge is dynamic. Learners' needs are varied and also change over time. 
as well as the constantly changing national priorities and global trends. So this justifies the ongoing and cyclical process of the curriculum development. Now, how soccer can be infused into the five phases of the curriculum development process? I will explain how soccer can be integrated into each phase. So in the first phase, which is assess needs, we can collect data from different stakeholders. For example, we can discover needs by collecting data about prospective students' expectations, perspectives uh, towards our program, as well as knowing their characteristics through methods such as interview and survey. We can also discover the needs from our lecturers. So their disciplinary knowledge and experiences can provide much information on how the curriculum should be designed Examining their expert, uh, competencies may also feed information about the availability of adequate and appropriate teaching staff in the faculty. So such information can be collected by interview, focus group, meeting, and even from the lecturers on reflections. We can also discover needs by examining the input from the industries via survey, uh, interview to get insight into employability skills, for example, knowledge, skills, and attributes demanded by the industries. The so advertisement analysis can also be employed to gather information on job specification needed by the industries. So we can see that all these are sort of inquiries. Now, sort of inquiry can also be adopted to obtain data from the local community and to align the curriculum with the national, regional, as well as global priorities and policy through the analysis of related documents. Needs may also be discovered by referring to the standards and requirements set by the ministry or government, uh, governing bodies, such as uh, accrediting agencies, professional bodies, and so forth. However, this will not be regarded as sort of inquiry. So we can also discover needs yeah, through literature and credible resources, okay, particularly on best practices in teaching and learning on our subject matter, related curricula, as well as also knowing the essential competencies of future ready graduates. Yeah. So we all know that literature review is part of software or systematic inquiry. Now we move on to the next phase, which is design. So what is Curriculum design. Curriculum design is in, uh, refers to the manner in which the various elements of the curriculums are stated. So it determines the structure, pattern, or organizations of the curriculum. So in the curriculum design phase, we either define the elements of a curriculum, the relationship between these elements, the principles of organizations, how we organize them, as well as the administrative conditions under which it is to operate. So how can SOTA help in this design phase? The decisions yeah, on the design can be based on the reference to credible resources, literature review, and also the outcomes of systematic inquiries that are done in the first phase. So however, the design of the curriculum is also determined by expert experience, assumptions, beliefs, and expectation, okay? Disciplinary uh, traditions and standards, learning environments, and political landscape can also affect the way we design the curriculum, but these are not regarded as the input from sort of inquiries. Now, in the design of the curriculum, it is imperative to ensure the constructive alignment between the M, learning outcomes, and the content Okay, with the teaching and learning delivery, as well as with the assessment. Okay? The integration of SOTA produces an evidence-based curriculum in which more informed decisions can be made. So moving on to the next two phases of curriculum development, delivering the curriculum and monitoring it. We see that SOTA can continue to be integrated. We can discover problems, and obtain resolution ideas by collecting data from our stakeholders again. So for example, we can obtain uh, input
input from existing students as well as from our alumni on their expectations, perspective, their characteristics, learning styles, performance, uh, learning experience, student selection criteria via methods such as interview, survey, looking at the cost performance, uh, even through curriculum analytics by looking into the interrelationship between uh, different or various data, uh, cost feedback, reflection, as well as alumni's uh, career path. Yeah? We can also discover problems and obtain resolution ideas by collecting data from our lecturers or about our lecturers. Yeah? For example, the availability of needed expertise, their knowledge level, how their letters update in the subject matter helps in discovering problem or giving resolution ideas, their motivation, experiences, competencies, professional development needs. So all this we can try to collect through methods such as interview, focus group, meeting with them, observation, self-reflection, peer review, student feedback, and so forth. We can also discover problems, okay, and obtain resolution ideas about teaching and learning process. Yeah, uh, for instance, in terms of the content, delivery and assessment, through the outcomes of the sort of inquiries that we do at the course level. So, now, next, in the deliver and monitor phases, we can also employ sort of inquiries to gain insight from industry again. Okay? For example, we can actually analyze the industrial trend reports, uh, interview, survey, or getting input from the industry advisory report to know more about the employability skills demanded by the employers, for example. The same applies to the committees, either local, national, or global. And literature review will continue to play an important role to inform on best practices in teaching and learning on our subject matter, keeping abreast of development in specific subject matters, uh, related curricula, as well as essential competence, uh, competencies needed by our future ready graduates. Now, in the final phase, reflect. We redesign the curriculum by identifying aspects that require revision or complete overhaul. Okay? Now, decisions on are made they are based on the insights or evidence that we gain from shorter findings as well as from non shorter sources. So we can further employ shorter inquiry in this particular phase, okay, which is on uh, the reflect phase, where we can actually conduct career analysis among alumni to gain insight whether their knowledge and skills are in alignment with the societal or industry needs. The reflect phase also includes reflecting on the effectiveness of the monitoring strategies, okay, as well as plan for further improvement. Now, here you go, I have explained how so the inquiries can be actually integrated into the different phases. According to Van Genel, sort of inquiries should focus more on the methods, reflections, and dialogue rather than just on the outputs. Thus, I have actually spent uh, much time explaining on the methodology aspect of integrating subtle into curriculum development process. And moving on into the second part of the talk, which is to elaborate on the initiative to integrate subtle into curriculum development of our own academic programs in Unimas. So in the year 2019, the top management of Unimas had agreed to provide top-down grant to program coordinators of 47 undergraduate academic programs in Unimas. So the aim of this initiative is basically to produce, sustain, or enhance high-quality, strategically aligned, research-informed, and evidence-based curriculum practices to bring significant impact on student learning. So we have 47 project teams and every project team was given three research questions in their respective sort of projects. So the first research question is they have to answer or have to find uh, answers to this question, which is what is the design of a future ready curriculum with distinctive features for a specific program? How can the curriculum content transformative teaching and learning delivery as well as alternative assessment practices can be strategically aligned and 
After that, research question number three is an assessment done after the implementation of the revised curriculum or the transformed curriculum, where the, research, uh, the project leaders or the project team is expected to look into what is the significance of the redesigned curriculum practices, where they actually may focus on specific aspect, okay, because it's too broad to cover everything. Now, we started off the initiative by conducting workshops to guide them on how to employ software in the curriculum development process. And we also created opportunities for uh, program coordinators uh, uh, who are also the project leaders to discuss among themselves on how to actually integrate software inquiry to either transform or enhance their respective academic programs. Um, come and also another entity in the university we have also provided individual consultations to assist in producing appropriate software plans. We also organize software symposium to provide a platform for them to share the outcomes of their ongoing software inquiries. And some of the ongoing findings from the software on academic programs initiatives are also published in Vinima's software bulletin, which is available on the CAM website. So at the same time, yeah, together with other, a few others, I have also employed sort of inquiry into this particular initiative with the intention to improve the implementation and the effectiveness of how to actually uh, implement this campus-wide campus sort of uh, into academic programs initiative. So one of the things that we did in the project is that we conducted a survey which consisted of mostly open-ended questions and the survey was uh, administered nine months after the Sorter on Academic Programs commenced, and 20 project leaders uh, voluntarily participated in the survey, and we did thematic analysis to understand more on the benefits, if any, <laughs> on the challenges, as well as derive some uh, lessons learned. Okay? Now, one of the benefits yeah, that were highlighted by the respondents, yeah, the first benefit is consolidating academic programs is identified as one of the main benefits of this sort of on academic program initiative. So this came from the respondents. So here are some of the specific comments that support this benefit. So the second benefit that they highlighted is increased knowledge. They reported an increase of knowledge on subject matter on future-ready curriculum, innovative uh, teaching strategy, alternative assessment, and so forth. The third benefit is providing the opportunity for them to practice software. So these top-down requests created opportunities for them to gain knowledge and experience in software practice. They also highlighted yeah, the requirement to involve various stakeholders as a benefit of this initiative. So these are some of the benefits that uh, we are able to extract uh, from the response uh, from these uh, project leaders. Yeah? Now, in terms of challenges, three teams were derived. First one is the lack of knowledge, particularly on future ready curriculum. Secondly, they highlighted the challenge in obtaining responses and information from stakeholders. And thirdly, the challenge is in getting uh, consensus yeah, on the changes to be made in the curriculum. Due to some human factors issues, such as uh, openness towards diverse opinions and experiences, that's one thing. Willingness to change is also another issue, uh, which is very related to attitude. Too many members in the projects and so on and so forth. So lastly, what I would like to highlight is uh, some of the lessons learned. Yeah? from this uh, campus-wide implementation of a software inquiry on academic programs. So these lessons are particularly useful for those who plan to implement similar endeavor in your respective institution. So lesson number one, we found that workshops are crucial and essential. 75% uh, of the respondents in our study reported that workshops that we have conducted as very helpful. And lesson number two, such a campus-wide uh, endeavor serve as a good means to introduce sort of practice to academics. Yeah? So this is derived from one of the benefits that were reported by our study respondents. Yeah? In fact, with this uh, endeavor, we actually can reach out to many academics at one time because almost every academic is involved in a specific academic program. So indirectly, they are involved in a sort of project and getting some experience through it. 
So this survey also asked about additional information or support yeah, that the project leaders needed during the implementation of their software projects. So this survey questions as well as the challenges that were derived earlier on revealed that more guidance is actually needed. Comprehensive guidelines and handbooks are much sought by the project leaders. This may include step-by-step -step, uh, guide for software inquiry in curriculum de development, just like uh, what uh, Fumiko has mentioned in her study of uh, her software sort of project. She also found that you know a lot of assistance is actually needed in terms of how to actually conduct software sort of properly. Okay, so that's one thing. So they do require this how to guide. And secondly, maybe a comprehensive explanation of future ready curriculum handbook is maybe is necessary yeah, for them to do this uh, um, successfully. The next lesson that I got yeah, from this uh, particular study is um, workshops have to be involved all of the members and not just the project leaders. Lesson number five, not just to provide guidance, but need to provide continuous guidance by, for example, providing a reference resources on the website, uh, conducting regular workshop, not just uh, beginning, yeah, at the beginning before the project starts, and provide consultation service, something like a help desk yeah, to provide support throughout the process itself. Lesson number six that uh, we learned from this uh, inquiry that we met is to provide guidance uh, through knowledge sharing sessions. So this allow different sort of teams to learn from each other. So sharing can focus on innovative uh, teaching and learning practices as well as on sharing on alternative assessment. And finally, the last lesson, which I personally think is critical to ensure the success of this campus-wide sort of on academic programs initiative is to strengthen the project milestones monitoring. So far, we have organized a sort of symposium. We have published a sort of bulletin to disseminate uh, the ongoing uh, findings. And indeed, they are useful, but I'm seeing the need for each project team to report the outcomes at the university level committee to make possible the actualization of the transform or redesign curriculum. And I also hope that you know, with this sort of infusion you know, into academic program, uh, into, into the curriculum development process, yeah, uh, I hope to see that there is a change in the university curriculum development practice in which uh, changes to curriculum will be more evidence-based and not merely based on the directives from certain authorities. So the keyword here is evidence-based curriculum. So I will end with my final slides, uh, which is to recap on the significance of social inquiry in curriculum development. So of course, uh, the very significant things uh, is it enables uh, informed decision on the curriculum design. Secondly, it informs the institution on the necessary improvement, adjustment, policies, and even on the professional development programs. And it can impact a faculty or a university curriculum practices when the outcomes are actually shared yeah, via various channels. And finally, contribute to the scholarship of curriculum leadership when the outcomes are actually made public. So with that, uh, I end my presentation. Uh, thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for uh, being with me for the past half an hour. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Chen Chuan Chen, for that inspiring talk on how subtle practices can be part of curriculum development and at what that uh, at each stage or phases of cur curriculum development, subtle can be integrated. Um, okay, I think it is time for our question and answer session. Okay. So based on your experience that you have shared just now um, on SOTL inquiry on academic program, um, what, can you share the challenges in promoting SOTL practices as a culture in the, in the university or among the community of educators? Sharing the challenges. I think you should know as well, right, Dr. Katini? <laughs> Just asking the question. <laughs> uh, it is always uh, not easy to change the mindset. Yeah? I think uh, until today, 
um, most of the academics, um, I wouldn't say not only in Winimas, could be in other universities as well, um, they will still put like uh, the research, yeah, the disciplinary research as the main priority, okay? Um, so that, that will create a lot of challenge, yeah? Because a lot of time, um, we can see that at the moment, a lot of weightage is somehow given to research, disciplinary research when it comes to uh, career advancement, okay, you know what I mean? Uh, which uh, basically uh, something that hinder the progress of uh, the involvement of uh, uh, academics in SOTO. But at the same time, um, I'm also seeing a group of uh, passionate dynamic lecturers who are very passionate in their teaching and learning, where they do see that you know the main function in a university is not just about creating knowledge in the specific disciplinary area, but the most important thing is how we actually can deliver those specific knowledge to our next generation. That will require a totally different skills and knowledge. And that's where SOTO comes in. And I'm very happy to see that there is actually a, a group of uh, passionate educators here who are very much into that. And I believe there will be the champion in SOTA and will lead others to work towards SOTA. So we just have to be patient and we just have to continue and persevere, continue with our effort. And I believe one day, uh, all the academics, not only in Minimas, but also in other universities who are actively in this order, will know the importance of why they actually need to have systematic inquiry into teaching and learning. Yeah, so I, I think that's that's uh, do I, yeah, I did yeah, I you. Think, <laughs> I think Prof really highlighted it very well why SOTO is very, very important. And then it's yes. quite good that we can have champions or leaders in. Uh, advocating subtle uh, in our everyday teaching and learning processes. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's not easy to create a culture, but right. I think it can be done, you know, right. with understanding from the academics, you know, with the understanding, you know, uh, knowing that, you know, the, the, the vision, uh, the purpose they are in the university is not just about their specific uh, disciplinary specific. knowledge. Yeah. It's about how we want to develop our nation through our delivery of our knowledge to them. And that is important. Yeah. Right. I think um, that is about time that we have left. Um, so is there any um, last words from the panelists? Do you have any last word, Prof? Yeah, I would like to really thank uh, the Inacha and also Prof. Miko uh, for your willingness to share with us your uh, very uh, comprehensive uh, experience. And I really love uh, a lot of ideas from Dr. Nacha uh, and also Prof. Miko on how you actually develop the uh, uh, software yeah, in your own context, yeah, which I feel is very unique, like what uh, Dr. Nacha is doing is really very amazing. Yeah, By infusing software in many of the different educational development initiatives, and this is really very amazing. I really want to learn from you, Dr. Nacha. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for this opportunity. I think without uh, this kind of opportunities as well, um, you know, this is also where we get our inspiration and our boost of energy from. Uh, as you may know, educational development is a very lonely job. Uh, because most people are like disciplinary faculty members, right? So they are teaching, then they have their community of people. But as if you are a pure, pure like educational developer who only works with faculty members, you're mostly on your own. Uh, even though you work with faculty members. So it's it's a, it's a great pleasure to be with all of you. I learned uh, quite a lot from each of the speakers also. Um, I hope that, you know, this kind of uh, annual gathering could be uh, 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 continued on and we welcome you to uh, Pedagogy Day also. Thank you so much, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, that's okay. May I? Okay, thank you very much. So I 
very, very impressed with today's session. So I really so had a very good experience about that, about this. So I hope to continue to collaborate with uh, other Asian countries because the culture is a little different than the Western countries. So I'd like to know about uh, more about the uh, Asian countries sort of project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to all the speakers on behalf of Unimas. We would like to say big thanks to all the three speakers, Dr. Nachama Sakalingam from University, um, Singapore University of Technology and Design, Singapore, Professor Dr. Fumiko Unyo from Teiko University, Japan, and of course, Professor Dr. Chen Chuan Jen from University of Malaysia, Sarawak for, for that very engaging, inspiring uh, session. Um, on um, subtle projects, subtle initiatives, sharing, disseminating knowledge that we have to wider community of educators. Right. Thank you to the audience as well, participants, for that, uh, for your attention. We hope the presentation will be beneficial for everyone. So we end our session for today. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. 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 Thank you.